A very good afternoon to all, everyone present here. With warm greetings, it gives me great pleasure to extend a warm welcome on behalf of Department of Civil Engineering, Amity School of Engineering and Technology, Amity University, Haryana. Conducting this wonderful five days global workshop on overseas career and educational expo. Today we came into our final day. Today is our last workshop day, fifth day. So now I'm handing over to Dr. Naveen, sir, to give a brief introduction to the speakers. Please, yeah. sir. Thank you, Dr. Praveen. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to five days global workshop on overseas career and education expo. Before proceeding further, I would like to introduce today's uh, speaker, Mr. Laupreet Verma, founder of Win Newer English and Consultancy. He completed post-graduation from Amber College, Toronto, Canada. He completed MBA in marketing management. He is pursuing PhD in operational excellence. He holds a lean Six Sigma black belt. His name is registered in a world book record holder for 10,000 plus students to prepare for IELTS. Also PTE global with free of cost. He is an experienced educationist, uh, educationist and business leader having more than 10 years of immigration experience help thousands of students to migrate abroad. With this introduction, now I would request Mr. Laupreet Verma to deliver a talk on Canada Students Visa Roadmap. Thank you, sir. Now it's over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, special thanks to Dr. Naveen, Dr. Neeraj Gupta, Dr. Praveen Babu for organizing this wonderful uh, series of sessions and uh, heartfelt gratitude toward MIT University and the entire team and to the brilliant students. Uh, today, we'll talk about uh, what programs will be available in Canada, what opportunities are there for the students and why to study in Canada. And we will discuss about that. We'll start with some factual information. So this presentation would take approximately 45 minutes. I'll try to finish it. And after that, 50 minutes uh, Q&A session. Uh, now we'll begin the presentation. So first we'll go with some facts. So this is an annual report of Parliament on Immigration in 2020. So if we see the facts clearly, in 2020, 57,74,342 people travel documents were issued to visitors. That means lots of people traveled during this time and worker on work visa and on student visa. So students are greatly accepted uh, to the Canadian uh, government because of many factors that we're going to discuss later on. 404369 temporary work permits were issued under the Temporary Foreign Worker and International Mobility Program. It clearly states that there is a scope for students. Those students who applied student per permit after their qualification, they applied for work permits. So these many work permits were approved. 74,586 individuals transitioned from temporary to permanent residence. That means those who were on student visa or work permit got permanent residence in that span of time. 3,41,180 permanent residents were admitted in Canada during this span of time. About 8,500 French-speaking permanent residents were admitted to Canada outside Quebec and additional support for Francophone communication across Canada. So basically, we recommend all students, those who are preparing for Canada, if they learn French language, it will add on to your profile and they will definitely get advantage of that. Permanent and non-permanent immigration account for over 80% of Canadian population growth. See the number, more than 80% population holding permanent and no permanent, those who uh, apply on student visa and work permit. About 58% of permanent residents were admitted under the economic category, that is PNP, federal skill get worker category. So first pathway is once you will get student permit over there, after that you will get a work permit, then you can apply either PR in, uh, PNP program, provincial nominee program, or federal skilled worker category. 30,000 
87 refugee resettled, the highest number of any state worldwide. So refugee, basically those people who uh, uh, seek refuge to the Canadian government, they applied in this category. Immigrants and newcomer contribute to economical growth. This is the data taken from Ministry of Immigration, Refugee and Citizen. Immigrants and temporary foreign workers fill gap in Canada's labor force and help employers respond to vacancies in various sectors. Approximately one in four workers means 26% in Canada are immigrants. See the power of immigrants. As of 2016, there were 600,000 self-employed immigrants employing over 260,000 Canadians. That means those who go over there on student permit, work permit, they transit into PR, they have the power to hire Canadians if they establish their own business. In 2018, survey, 9% of small business owners reported hiring temporary foreign workers to address job vacancies in the prior 12 months period. Similarly, in 2019, the labor market participation rate of very recent immigration was 71% and recent immigrants were 76%. That is very high. In 2016, over one third of nurse aided orderlies and patient service associates in Canada were immigrants. So immigrants honor of small and me medium sized enterprises are successful in reducing a product process or marketing innovations into the marketplace. Many of these that immigrate as children or the children of immigrants on average contribute to Canada labor force and go on to the earn much as more as Canadian born. So equal opportunities are there. This is a strongest as uh, point uh, which lure students abroad. International students, so if you see the graph, IRCC facilitates the entry of students who wish to study at a designated Canadian education institute. So designated Canadian education institutes are those institutes which are basically authorized by the government. We call it DLI designated learning institute. So we, we have tie-ups with DLI uh, universities and students should study in DLIs only. In 2019, if we see 8,27,586 international students procured study permit in Canada, and this is the largest amount. 8,27,000 plus students got student visa. In 2019, 11,566 study permit holders were granted permanent residency. In 2019, 98,310 individuals were issued work permit through the temporary foreign worker under the international mobility program. So you can see the graph, it's on the rising trend. Now we'll talk about geographical facts about Canada. So Canada is also known as North America, if you see in the graph, if you see the below graph, this is the graph of America and upper portion, you can see British, Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario. This is Canada. This is called North America. That is in the yellow phase. And this is the en entire map of Canada. So as I said, Canada is known as North America. The word Canada is derived from indigenous word Canada, which means settlement or village in the language of the St. Lawrence Aruquians. It's 10 provinces. It has 10 provinces and three territories extend from the Atlantic to the Pacific and northward into the Arctic Oceans, covering 9.98 million square kilometer, 3.85 million square miles, making making it the world's second largest country by total area. Its southern and western borders with the United States stretching 8,891 kilometers in the world's longest binational land border. And the best thing is that you can travel. If you have a valid visa, you can travel. These are peaceful borders. Canada's capital is Ottawa and its three largest metropolitan areas are Toronto, Montreal and Vancouver. So let's know more about 
Canada. More facts. Canada is bigger than the European Union, bigger than the entire European Union, 33 times bigger than Italy and 15 times bigger than France. More than 30% larger than Australia, five times as big as Mexico, three times as big as India, and about the same size as 81,975 Walt Disney World put together. If we put together these many Disney Worlds together, then only one Canada you can have. There are more lakes here than anywhere else in the world. It's a country of lakes, 563 lakes, larger than 100 square kilometers. The Great Lake alone contains 18% 18, 18 of world's freshwater lakes. You can find pure and freshwater lakes here. So it's, again, a very fascinating point. You can have adventure. Canada has a world's longest coastline. If you walk and never stop, do not eat, do not rest your feet, do not get some sleep. It would take you four and a half years to walk the entire coastline of Canada. Canada has 10% of world's forest, six times more oil than Russia. Canada is so vast, even our parks trapped other countries. Parks are so huge, just look like uh, Niani National Park Reserve and the Northern Territories, not only is the site of behold and massive waterfalls, it also incredible 30,050 square kilometers, bigger than Albania and Israel. Wood Buffalo National Park is in Alberta and the Northwest Territory is even bigger than 44,807 square kilometers, which makes it bigger than Denmark and Switzerland. Toronto is Canada's largest metropolitan with over 6 million people. Montreal, Canada's second largest city with over 4 million inhabitants, is also second largest city in the world that has French-speaking population after Paris and France. About 38 million people live in Canada. Almost 82% of all Canadians live in urban areas. Life expectancy at birth is about 83 years. That is very high. There are 26 doctors per 10,000 people in Canada. The literacy rate is 99%. So almost all Canadian can read and write. So now we'll uh, learn about Canadian economy. Canada was the business world's best kept secret. Progress and innovation in Canada, especially in artificial intelligence, clean technology and healthcare has been monumental for decades by FOB, technology council. So entire data is based on research. Canada has ninth largest economy in the world as of 2020 with GDP of 1.64 trillion in USD. International trade, including both export and import is a large component of Canadian economy, each making up about one third of GDP. Canada's largest trading partners are the US, China and UK. The three largest industries in Canada are real estate, mining, and manufacturing. So these three are very highly demandable. Canada is fourth biggest producer of hydroelectric power after China, Brazil, and the USA. Canada puts some serious backing into STEM, science, technology, engineering, and maths. And as a result, the country is leagues ahead of others. Canada's leadership in areas such as artificial intelligence, clean technology, and healthcare, together with its more open minded policy toward migrants, has led to many international companies move to Canada. So, Canada is going to be a great hub, technology hub, very soon. Major Canadian industries in 2020 real estate, rental, and leasing contribute to GDP 256, and number of people in employed 0.25 million. Manufacturing is there, mining, quelling, A, oil and gas extraction, construction, healthcare and social assistance, finance and insurance, public administration, professional, scientific and technological services, educational services, wholesale trade. So student can build their career in these specific domains in order to get employability, in order to get PR or citizen further. Now we'll talk about great reason to move Canada. First, right to live 
anywhere. You will be allowed to reside the travel to any province area of Canada without any restriction. You can move to any province once you will get PR. Freedom to work. As permanent resident visa holder allowed to work for any company you wish. There is no restriction on the ground of race, uh, religion, caste. Subsidize education for kids. Your kids will allow to claim a free education in reputed public schools of Canada. Settle with family. This is a very welcoming country. Without any additional need of a family visa, you'll be allowed to invite your family to stay with you in Canada on the same visa. Work rights to spouse. Your accompanying spouse also gets similar full-time work right, rights. For an example, if you go on student visa, after six months, you can sponsor your spouse on work visa, and that is possible. Free medical coverage. Your family will be given a lifetime coverage of medical and health care by government once you will be permanent resident of there. It's an absolutely stunning country. You will definitely amaze. I've been there many times. I have almost spent four or five years in Canada and frequently visitor of Canada. I love with the beauty of Canada. Canada is well known for its high standard of living combined with the quality of life. Not only has it got the right balance, work, play, but also the perfect environment to, the, to enjoy both. Under federal skill worker programs, there are currently four, 347 occupations that can qualify you for fast track entry. You can check on Canada's government website as well about the NOC codes. They cover a huge variety of occupational, including medical, engineering, management, construction, and more. Similar to the UK's NHS, Canada's Medicare system offers free basic health care to everyone based on need rather than the ability to pay. Citizen Canada are modern, smart, stylish, and clean. Canada is really built from families. In the suburb areas, there's feeling of safety and togetherness with lots of community events such as barbecues, festival, catering to families with kids. It is probably no surprise that Canada was ranked number one in the world for tolerance in the HSBC Expert Explorer Survey, renewed for being one of the most open-minded country around. This is great news if you are immigrating to Canada. There are many immigrants and Canadians who are welcoming no matter what your race, gender, or culture. It's officially Canadian breathes some of the cleanest air on the planet. A report by the Fresher Institute recently ranked Canada ninth out of 33 richest and cleanest country on the planet. Public service in Canada are excellent and with some of the best public transportation that you can find, it's easy to navigate to. There are some amazing food to be to had in Canada. Farmers making pr prolification in uh, smaller towns and large towns and cities are themselves on the sophisticated and modern restaurants. It takes no time at all to pop over the border to the US so you can travel to US. Offering a complete different lifestyle, who wouldn't want to be so close to the joy of uh, Seattle, New York states and Hollywood. Now, why study in Canada? On while you learn, world-class education system, innumerable and distinctive courses, you have wide variety of programs, quick visa processing through SDS. SDS is student direct stream. Well, I'll, I'll discuss this in further slides. Easy availability of work permit. After once you will graduated, you will get work permit. Diverse community. Now, why study in Canada? Canada is land of endless possibilities. Each year, nearly 500,000 international students choose Canada as their study destination. Opportunities available to those who live, work, and study here. When you study in Canada, you invest in your future. After all, Canadian education opened the door to employment and business opportunities and life in Canada after you study. Canada's university degrees and colleges diplomas are recognized worldwide, yet our tuition fees are among the lowest in English-speaking countries. Canada's vibrant research community is also a big draw. 
as an international student in Canada, you will enjoy all the same freedom which protect Canadians, respect for human rights, equality, and stable, peaceful society. You will feel safe, secure, and welcome here. These are the prominent top universities in Canada, Canada University of Calgary, Queen's University, Western University, Waterloo, University of Montreal, McMaster University, University of Alberta, McGill University, the University of British Columbia, and University of Toronto. Apart from this, there are other universities as well, but these are the major prominent universities where you can flourish your future. These are the top public colleges. Why I'm saying public? There are private colleges exist, but public should be the first preference because public colleges having DLI number, designated learning institution authority, and public institute will give you after study work permit. So Algonquin College, British Columbia Institute of Technology, Centennial College, Vancouver Community College, Humber College, Seneca College, New Brunswick Community College, Sheridan College, Durham College, George Brown, St. Lawrence, Mohawk, Cambrian, Niagara College, Georgian College, and lots of the list is endless. We have more than 250 direct IAPs in colleges and universities like public and world-class colleges. Now we'll talk about the eligibility criteria of enrollment. What is the basic eligibility? If, you're, if you have completed your graduation and looking for the master program, your academic percentage uh, should not be less than 60%. So many colleges accept 60 to 70 percent according to their needs uh, in bachelor. Some universities and colleges do accept academic percentage of minimum 55 percent, but with some certain conditions. For master programs, IELTS uh, requirement should be overall 6.5, not less than 6. That is very important. If you will apply at 5.5 or 6 each for master program, definitely you'll get refusal. You won't get the visa because the basic requirement is 6.5 overall, not less than six bands. Some universities require GMAT, TOEFL, GRE, Medical College Admission Test, MCAT. But it depends which program you are going to enroll, which university you're going to enroll. Now, if you have completed your 10 plus two for the bachelor program, academic requirement, again, the same, 60 should be the least, and it varies from 60 to 75 percent in 10, 12th standard. Uh, some universities and colleges again do accept 55 percent, but if you have less than 50 percent in any subject, that's going to be a problem. Then we have to apply in the non SDS category. I'll come to that point in next slides. So, IELTS requirement for 12th standard is six overall and each, not less than six. So make sure you do not apply your file less than six hours because otherwise you're going to be in trouble. Enrollment intakes, there are three main enrollments, January, May, and September. May is considered as a small intake, whereas, whereas January and September intakes are the bigger intakes. Now, this is the structure Canadian student visa process. I'll discuss it in detail. So there are two categories. First is SDS, student direct stream. Second is non-SDS category. What is the difference? We'll discuss, we'll discuss the comparison in the upcoming slides, but the holistic approach. SDS program is streamlined process. Minimum documents, minimal compliances are there. Non-SDS complex process, lengthy documentation is there. Now I'll talk about comparison. So if we talk about SDS program, student direct stream, it's a streamlined process. As I said, academics, academics should not be less than 50% in all subjects and average. Uh, LO is, is required letter of acceptance from designated learning institute, GIC, guaranteed investment certificate. So GIC is basically is an FD kind of in India, we call it FD fixed deposit. So we have to deposit the funds in any Canadian approved bank, Scotia Bank, CIBC Bank. will open the account of the student. We deposit 10,200 Canadians in that bank. 
and the bank generate the certificate within a week. And after that, SOP is required, statement of purpose. We uh, build the SOP on behalf of students after getting students' information and students come to know students' circumstances. It should be very effective. SOP plays an integral role in student success. If your SOP is not up to the mark, you have to define many things in SOP. Why you are going to Canada? Why you choose this program? Why this college? Why not other colleges? And how this program will help you to enhance your career further and what you will do once you will complete your program qualification and what would be the job perspective uh, you will get in your country after completion of your program and uh, how you will, will survive over there. You have to mention uh, who is going to finance your uh, or funding uh, you for the entire living expenses and the entire education. There are lots of factors. It's a complex statement. So we pay special focus. We have intensive experience about it. Uh, fee receipts. So once you'll get, a, get an offer letter, we deposit the money. I'll come to the process later on. So fee receipts, IELTS minimum six, medical tests, biometrics, visa lodgement. So this is these are the some steps of SDS. Whereas non-SDS, if you are having less score in IELTS or if you have cleared PTE, then your file will automatically shift to non-SDS, non-student or extreme, where you can apply if you have less than 50%. It's a complex per process. Lengthy documentation is required. Letter of acceptance is required, of course. IELTS, not less than 5.5 bands. Fees receipts from the college. SOP is there. Gap justification if you have gap. Medical test is required. Financial documents are the additional documents, property evaluation, CA reports, income tax certificate, your returns, experience certificates, salary certificates, bank, bank statements, supportive affidavits, biometrics, and other lots of uh, requirements are there for non-STS. Now we'll talk about visa process. Uh, one more thing I would like, like to add in this uh, visa process, if you have an experience after your qualification, for an example, if you have uh, two years of experience after your graduation, then we have to justify that experience. No matter whether we're going to apply in SDS or non-SDS, we have to justify that experience. That experience should be justifiable. Your salary receipts will be attached. Your bank statements will be attached. A letter from your company will be attached. Uh, your employment letter, appointment letter will be tasked. Uh, we recommend students to go with SDS program only because non-SDS having very low ratio. SDS program is having almost 95 to 98% success rate, whereas non-SDS is having almost 50-50%. So now we'll talk about Canadian visa process. First, offer letter, we, we gather the document of the students, then we approach to college with the relevant program. We will analyze your previous history, your experience, your qualification, your gap. After the analysis, we'll recommend the student with some options, like these options where you can apply. And uh, we focus on visa-oriented programs, career-oriented programs, where you can get easily job. And after that, you can get easily PR. So three things we keep on keep in mind visa-oriented, career-oriented, and third thing is PR-oriented. Now, once we'll apply to the college, offer letter will be there and college will proceed the offer letter, uh, conditional offer letter. So conditional offer letter means we have only applied the college uh, with application fees. Some colleges have uh, application fees range from 80 to $150. Centennial College and other colleges, some colleges offer uh, uh, free of cost. So we'll help you out to find out with that. Once the college allot conditional offer letter, then we will pay the fees to the college and college will release the receipts and LOA, that is letter of acceptance. It takes appro approximate a week or to 10 days. Then we apply GIC certificate, GIC uh, to the bank at Scotia or CIBC or other banks. Then within a week, we'll get GIC certificate. We deposit 10,200. Uh, Canadians. After that, we apply for medical and nearby your medical approved hospital or approved doctor. And once you will come through the medical, they will give you medical tracking sheet. And then we make 
we prepare the statement of purpose according to your situation, your documentation, your educational history and others. And then all the educational documents, your uh, statement of purpose, medical tracking sheet, GIC certificate, LOA, we combine every document, your IELTS will lodge the file. Once we lodge the file, biometric instruction letter will be generated within one to two days. With that biometric instruction letter, we further book your appointment near your uh, biometric office. And then your result will take approximately 12 to 13 weeks after the lodgement of file, not after the biometrics, after the lodgement of your file. And after that, uh, we'll, we'll help student about flight booking, further preparation, accommodation, and settlement services. So this is the entire journey of student visa from first offer letter till the settlement services. Any question in, uh, you have would be more welcomed. I would be happy to answer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Lovprit. It was a good presentation. You have covered all the points. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. If you have any question, I request participant to just drop your queries in the chat box. Could you please throw some light on, uh, in case if students is not able to clear IELTS, any options are there without IELTS? Uh, well, Dr. Naveen, uh, IELTS is a mandatory for Canada. Okay. Uh, I would recommend student must complete IELTS at least six bands uh, in each, overall 6.5 if they're applying for masters. Some universities like University of Toronto, they require seven each, 7.5 each. It's a medical profession that requires eight bands, seven bands minimum for that. For 12th graduate, they need six each overall. But if you get low than that, I would say revise the test, don't lodge your file. If you are unable to clear IELTS, if you think IELTS is, you don't want to clear it, then you should not apply for Canada. You can go to Spain. Spain doesn't require any IELTS. So if you want to apply for Canada, you must have the valid requirements. Yes, thank you. Thanks for the clarification here. One more uh, student is ar asking. Sure, sir. Difference between the college and university in Canada. Well, uh, there are a couple of things uh, which you can notice. Uh, colleges, uh, most of the colleges are DLI designated learning institutes. So some private uh, colleges and universities are there as well. Of course, Universities having more options than colleges, colleges like universities are having master programs, degrees, bachelor degrees, master degrees, master degrees, colleges doesn't, uh, you know, don't hold uh, degrees, colleges mostly having diplomas, advanced diplomas, two years, three year diplomas, but universities are having proper four year degrees, then masters, doctorate, postdoctorate, research faculties. So university is having a wider scope, like a sea, and colleges are like rivers. And uh, of course, you would have uh, you know extra advantages at universities. Uh, you will find uh, you know most of the Canadians they enroll at universities. Universities offer uh, some specific courses as well that uh, even colleges don't offer those uh, courses. So there are lots of uh, you know uh, differences. But again, it depends which college and university you are comparing to. Yes. Okay. And what are the major consider for the scholarship candidate is asking? Yeah, sure. One thing I would like to add uh, uh, regarding university and colleges about the fee structure. Universities are having huge fee structure. Colleges are limited to certain extent like Fourteen to sixteen thousand maximum is eighteen thousand per year. But universities start uh, from twenty thousand Canadians a year. Uh, I have seen like University of Toronto, they are charging even thirty-seven thousand for a year for from international students. See, once you will get PR over there, it's easy for you to get into the university as you are going to only pay twenty-five percent of the entire fee structure. But for international students, you have to pay the full fees. For an example, if you are international student and the fee structure is 10,000, you have to pay 10,000 Canadian dollar for a year. And if you are citizen or permanent resident over there, 
you have to pay just twenty five hundred dollars. So there is a huge difference. So we recommend students at initial age they should move into the designated learning institute like college, get their desired education, uh, get at least two years of education so that they will get three years of work permit. So in that three year of work permit, if if they complete only one year of work, they will be eligible for PR. They can apply PR. Once they will get PR. they can go into any kind of university because the expense will be delimited at a larger scale now coming to coming back to your point dr navin uh, uh, could you please repeat your question regarding if you want to get this scholarship what are the major consider okay for getting this scholarship so basically if if you're seeking scholarship uh, first of all you have to intensively find which college which university is providing scholarship most of the universities they have scholarship schemes for international if you having exceptional scores like 90 plus are you having very good scores in english they every university is having their own specific requirements so if you have excellent scores excellent you know educational career and uh, you know history work history then certainly universities will consider Uh, i cannot comment on the percentage of the scholarship but yes most of the universities have scholarship uh, uh, categories scholarship policies for international students a few colleges also provide scholarship uh, i mean it, it depends upon your subject your entire qualification and your further qualification so it's it's very vague question uh, uh, not many colleges are providing scholarship but Uh, a few provide some uh, you know colleges give you a free application because of your academics or give you um, uh, some off in your if you pay the entire fee so something like that hope i cleared your point yes please yes yes and could you throw some more light on the pr visa process in detail yeah definitely certainly i would love to So first of all, uh, if you enroll, I will write uh, write down on the screen. If you enroll as a student in two years program in Canada, you will get three years of work permit after completion of your qualification. Now the condition here is, if you complete two years of education plus minimum of 1 year full time work in canada you will be eligible to apply for permanent residency so this is the basic criteria now you would have three full years of work permit only one year of permit after two year of education will make you eligible for pr once you will get the pr you can apply for citizen after 3 full years of stay and you will get all amenities all facilities once you will be pr so that's why we recommend all the students to enroll at least for 2 years so those students who enroll for one year program they will get only one year post grad work permit so for an example in one year work, work permit if you didn't there are 12 months of course right so if you didn't get job for one month you you keep on trying you keep on inter, you know companies keep on interviewing or the process there and you will left with 11 months you will not be eligible for pr i mean that criteria will not match so at least 12 months full time work is required in after 2 years in order to eligible for pr so most of the graduations in canada are of 4 years but masters are 2 years so if students have already 4 year graduation like for mechanical btech they have 4 year graduation they can apply for Two years master, and if they have intensive work experience, 
intensive intensive work experience in good company in in any good you know mncs after 3 years of work experience they can apply for 1 year mba fast track mba and then you have to appear for other exam gmat gre hope i cleared your question sir yes yes please drop other... your questions in the chat box okay sir in case if students want to contact you could you please share your details so i think they have understood in case if they need any further clarification they can contact me or they can approach you directly yes sir certainly so yes uh, students can directly call me at 7973160027 they can also email at office at winnerenglish.com and i would recommend all the student to follow us on social medias type winner english in youtube facebook and instagram follow us for ready regular updates if you need any ielts help visa counseling if you need the guidance for any any kind of visa for your future ab study abroad plan you can contact me any time on the given numbers and we provide free study material free guidance and lots of stuff on our social medias so follow us on youtube instagram facebook for further um, guidance and help they can call me anytime yeah thank you thank you dr now yeah. it's time for a vote of thanks now i request dr neeraj gupta to deliver a vote of thanks thank dr. you sir thank you sir yes yes you yes. you welcome sir thanks a lot for this opportunity yes please go ahead i dr neeraj gupta on behalf of civil engineering department mit school of engineering and technology mit university haryana would like to extend gratitude and regards to the management of mit university a special thanks to the honorable vc sir dr pb sharma sir pro vice chancellor madam dr padma kali banerji and the director madam dr sali baskar bajaj for allowing us to conduct the event and providing the required infrastructure for the same further i may like to express our sincere thanks to mr lavprit verma founder of win your english and consultancy for giving an excellent talk on the visa process in canada i must mention our deep sense of appreciation for mr lavprit verma for giving us insight about the various career and education opportunity in canada i would also like to appreciate the efforts made by the head of civil engineering department dr namin vp for planning and organizing the workshop my special regards to all the faculty members and non teaching staff of the mit school of engineering and technology for their time and cooperation in organizing this workshop i also like to extend my heartfelt thanks to all the participants for attending the workshop without your participation this event would have not been possible so thank you all for your cooperation throughout the five days and you make the workshop a huge success so thank you all participant and thank you mr lavprit verma for your support throughout the workshop thank you thank so you much all. sir for your kind words have a yeah. great day thanks thank you neeraj now i request uh, participant to fill their feedback before leaving the session